He rose the ball ways to Calvary. We still are at sea. Sadly, it's so so we first started coming in 1978, and we've been coming ever, every year since. And uh, it's been something that we look forward to. We've met wonderful people here, both the spectators and artists. We've developed relationships that have been long-lasting. We've become artists ourselves, and we now do oil landscape painting. Art Week is it's so amazing because when you come here, you get to talk to all the artists. And they're so welcoming. It's interesting how they can explain what they do with their work and stuff. And I've been coming to Art Week for 15 years now, and I've never been disappointed. It seems like there's different artists here each year, so you get to meet somebody different. But there's also the old ones that are here that you've seen forever, so you get to talk to them again. Um, Art Week is probably the most welcoming place in Great Falls for an entire week. You come here, it's, it doesn't cost you anything to come in, which is amazing. It's great to bring your family. I brought the kids here this weekend. Wanted to be sure that they got to see the different types of art. I think it's good to have culture in your life. So Maddie here wants to be uh, an artist someday. So we've been talking for about a month and a half about coming here for art week. You were pretty excited, weren't you? Yeah. I was thinking about it for a very long time. Every day I just kept trying to not get like crazy, <laughs> too crazy. Yeah. Did you like all the artists that you saw? Yeah, it was pretty much pretty. Cool. Was it? Did they spend a lot of time with you? Yeah. Yeah. Talking to the artists is really welcoming and they always look intrigued to see what you think about their art and are always open to answer any questions. This morning, we've had two groups of high school students from two different uh, high schools in Great Falls, and they're, they ask very inquisitive, wonderful questions. They're interested in a different medium, and they're learning a lot because we have artists here from all over the United States, and they're not going to have very many experiences like that. Okay. One of the things that uh, people find interesting about my display, uh, my sculptures are uh, all about the Plains Indians. That's my area of expertise. And one thing I do is for each tribe, since they're different, the Blackfeet, the Nez Perce, the Cinnaboy, is I do have a brief history of who this person is at what time they are. Because some of them are pre-contact and some of them are post-contact. These three are post-contact. they have the typical regalia on that they would be wearing at that you know, particular time that I have decided. You know, as a young person, for me anyway, it's inspiring to see what I can do for um, my own art, but also the inspiration I can get um, from others and just the experience of being here with you know, like-minded creative people. Uh, I think when people come in the room, they really like the complimentary style of uh, art that we both have, Marsha and myself. Uh, Marsha does mostly landscapes. I do wood carvings, mostly miniature birds. Uh, that's, the, that's the main thing people say when they come in the room. Hi, my name is Ben Pease. I'm a Crow and Northern Cheyenne artist. Um, I work within my culture, within my heritage. My audiences, they come in here and they, they really grasp what I'm trying to say and they're, they're drawn by the cultural aspect and being that I have this statement or this this these images to share you know people are really um, intrigued by the idea of having this cultural representation of Native American artists or indigenous artists And I like to work at the show. I like to show the people um, some of the mediums that I employ. I use oil and acrylic, and this is a scratch board where I scratch the black off and reveal the white clay underneath, which I'll then paint later. And I have several samples of that in the booth. But uh, people are real interested in finding out how I do the scratch board. And, you know, a lot of them remember doing it in high school, and, and so it brings back memories of that to them. But, uh, so it's fun to share that with folks. And, 
and talk about the work and all the different medium that I do, which all involves animals. There are things in art that you can use uh, that are objective. In other words, things you can study, learn, things that go into a work of art. You know, form, line, composition, all that's objective. Subjective is what you put into it eternally. You know, your emotion, your, uh, what story you might be telling. Okay. Keep working it, playing with it. When I was a kid, I was always messing with clay in my hands or doing lots of sketching and drawing. Um, hopefully you guys have been too. I'm just going to show you. I took some of this wire, and we'll, we'll give you more if you need more. And I just started working it to get a kind of an idea of what I can do with it. Well, we don't have we don't have this, this play hot enough. So. Teach out at Power Schools. I teach Spanish, English, and art there for about the past 20 years, and we have been coming to the Young Masters program since it first started. And it has meant the world to my students to be able to be taught by a professional artist. And not only that, but just the personal attention that the artists give the students, inviting them to their studios, taking them to their rooms, um, offering full answers and stories to interview questions, and just showing them that art is part of life and part of a professional career that many have been interested in.